The video you're about to see is something I never do. It's a flat out testimonial for a piece of gear that I think is great. I borrowed this piece of gear. This is not an advertisement, but I get pretty excited and I get pretty enthusiastic. So here we go. This piece of gear is kind of revolutionary, and I've known Stevie Fryette for 30 years. I say that a little too often. I've, I've known some of these people that make the gear I use for a very long time, but it's the truth. We just all started around the same time, and he, he makes great amplifiers, great products, great accessories. But this thing is, as Pete Thorne says, huge because of what it does and how well it does it. So why is this so important? Well, you can take any amp at the level that you like it the most, which frankly, let's admit it, is usually too loud. The amp that you love the most at its sweetest sweet spot, the best volume for tone, is usually way too loud. Well, this processes it and then brings it back at any level. Now, master volumes may have promised this, other attenuators might promise this, but nobody really delivers. This actually sounds the same. What I'm doing here is I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a test. The first test I'm gonna show you is you know, the sound in bypass, which is just the sound of my divided by 13 RSA 23 up to six. Now I put it on six and it's in my blast area downstairs. There's a 412 with old Celestians and a microphone going through mic pre's. This is the real amp sound at its best. And you have to turn it up to six to get it to the best spot, the sweet spot, the edge of breakup. <laughs> And believe me, it's jet engine loud down there. It's stadium loud. But that's how the amp sounds best, on six, cranked up. The unit is bypassed and it's a true bypass, so you're just hearing the amp. Now I've set it to unity gain, which means when I switch it to operate, the unit is gonna be active. And what's going on here is the head, the divided by 13 head is going in, right? And then it's coming out through the power amp. And the power amp is a 100 watt power amp. And what this means is I can turn this volume down and it becomes like the greatest attenuator. But let me just show you what it sounds like at unity gain. So here's the divided by 13. Hit the operate switch. It's essentially the same. You might choose going through the unit just because it kind of enhances the sound a little bit. You might not. But it is so close to being the same that it doesn't matter. Now, here's the beauty of it. If you're on stage or you're in your bedroom or anywhere where you can't have jet engine loud sound, which is remember what I have down in the vault, and just turn the volume down. I'm gonna do it really gradually. Now, of course, when you turn a guitar down, it's always a buzzkill. We just took all this great sound and we, we turned it almost off. Now, the way I'll bring it back, because the speaker in my situation has gotten a lot softer, the speaker in the 412, the Celestian, so the mic needs to hear more. So the way I will get it back is by turning up the mic pre. So even though we have turned the amp down to almost conversational level, almost the level that I'm speaking at, or if you and I were speaking in the room, it's the same sound. Or it's so close that it doesn't matter. I'm gonna take it down even further, uh, you know, almost off. It's on about one now. Bring back more microphone, more mic pre. Same sound. Tempted to go further. I mean, can you go lower than one? More mic pre. Actually sounds a little fatter, but you also have to remember that there are other things changing because the microphone is reacting to the speaker in a different way because there's so much less coming out of the speaker. So everything changes on the recording end of it because the speaker is so soft. All that being said, to me, it sounds pretty much exactly the same. Now it has a presence and a depth and the presence is nice. I mean, works great. Sounds like it's an AC30 or something. That adds just the right amount of bottom end, right? 
And then it has these switches and the bright switch is in the middle. The deep switch is set at warm. You can go deeper, very subtle, and then brighter. And they're, but they're both musical settings. It's, it's like, yeah, I like that too. And it's foot switchable in the back. Now let's talk about the channel switching. So let's say you have your amp sounding the way you like it for the rhythm. You know, it's just at that, that spot where it sounds really good. And you're controlling the level with the volume here and you've got to turn down because you can. <laughs> But now in the set, you're gonna to wanna to play the solos much, much louder. Well, all you have to do is turn the other channel hotter. You can see, I'll even turn it up a little more. Hit the channel switch. It's the same tone of your amp that's set at its best spot, but now you're cranked up for solos. Then back to rhythm. So that's, I think, how I would use the channel switching in a live situation. This is not an inexpensive piece of gear, but consider if you have your favorite amp of your life, you're going to keep it forever and you can never turn it up because of circumstances at home, on the gig, in the studio. Uh, you can never get it to that point where it sounds the best, which is always too loud. And this device allows you to, to recreate that sound, even at the volume I'm speaking to you at right now, then it's pretty valuable. And you know, I'm not the only one that feels this way. This thing's been out for a year. Every one of these that he makes is sold. I mean, they're really, really, he can't make them fast enough. So Stevie told me about one other feature that he isn't sure a lot of people know about using the channel switching. Let's say in the same song, you wanna have a kind of big clean sound and then a distorted sound for the chorus. But those need to be at the same level because the vocalist is singing. You wanna, you know, you wanna fit in. You don't wanna jump way up for your distorted sound. So if I set the neck pickup at three and I've got channel two kind of turned up, I get this fat clean sound. But when I go to the, the kind of cranked sound, it's way too loud for the ensemble. Well, the solution is you switch channels and you have the other channel compensate for it. So these sounds will be balanced and even. It's gonna be at the same level as, but one's clean and one's dirty. So the foot switch also controls the effects loop and any foot switch will work. I have this black star foot switch that I pulled out of a drawer. It works perfectly too for this, just plugging it right into the unit. So uh, there's lots of compatible foot switches. I just plugged a pedal into the effects loop. Now, what could be more basic or convenient than that? I don't know. I just picked a pedal and plugged it in. It's a DOD rubberneck, which is a great pedal. But you know, there's no guarantee that an effects loop is gonna be balanced right or whatever. I just plugged it in and it got the greatest kind of delay sound. And once again, this is an amp without an effects loop, it, but this thing is between the amp and the speaker. So it's giving you an effects loop, let me show you. Now the tone of the actual delay pedal could not be better through this system. And you're not getting into that gackiness when, you know, sometimes you put distortion and a, a delay along with distortion. It's like, it's like, sounds exactly the way it should. The effects loop sounds great. And it was, you know, I hate to use the phrase, a no brainer. I just plugged the pedal in and it sounded great immediately. So let's take a look at the backside. I've placed it on top of the 64 basement and underneath this 15 watt bell and hell filmo sound from a film projector. The first thing I want to call your attention to is the two massive power tubes. Uh, they heat up slowly and it warms up slowly. Very satisfying like any tube amp. Foot switch jack ground lift, which is cool, convenient. Speaker out, of course, amp in. That's how you go in and out of it. Now check this out. It has impedance for the amplifier and the speaker. And what that means is that this basement at four ohms, I can match to the output, or the input rather, the output, speaker out, <laughs> whatever it is. And then uh, my Marshall 412 is 16, so I can actually cure the mismatch that I've lived with forever, plugging my basement into my Marshall. Uh, and it does sound cool with the mismatch, but it's compressed. So this will make it sound like it's supposed to. Pretty cool. Line out for recording. Haven't tried that yet. Effects send and return. And as you heard, this works beautifully. Line in. 
line out, line out level now, and it has the effects level. So in case there's a mismatch with whatever effect you're using, you can adjust it. I didn't have to work perfectly. Now back to the power tubes. So this amp is 15 watts. If you've got this amp on stage with a loud drummer, then the uh, power station will kick up the volume. So you can set it kind of, you know, wherever its sweet spot is. So it has headroom and this thing will reproduce the sound of this small amp at any volume you want. And at a lot louder volume than this amp is capable of. And you can keep up with the drummer and the bass player and the singer and the crowd and everything. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button and ring the bell. That lets us let you know every time we release a new video. And if you want guitar lessons, check out the 14 day free trial in the masterclass. We're up to over 1700 videos, over 140 hours of lessons and content. And there is a brand new beginner's course.